and I hope that you're having a fantastic time with us so far as we've been broadcasting from the Hyatt Regency as we get ready for the regional symposium, Violence as a Public Health Issue, the Crime Challenge. This morning, I want to welcome the President of the Board of Directors at the TNT Chamber of Industry and Commerce, Mr. Charles Parshley, who joins us on set this morning. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning to you, Rokas, and to your viewers and listeners across the region. I'm Pleasure so to happy to have you here this morning. Earlier, we had a, a bit of a conversation uh, about how crime has been affecting the business community, but I really want to get your perspective on how crime and violence has been affecting the private sector. Okay, well, let, if we start at, at the top in terms of, of one of the challenges from a, a country perspective is crime and violence normally discourages um, investment. Right. Uh, which de therefore has a profound effect on how we grew and even how we come out of, 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 of our economic challenges. Mm -hmm. So, so that, that's more from, from the, the macro side of it. Or the, the lower end, the micro side of it, actually living through the, the, the challenges. It's, it ranges from, from security of, of our employees, our employees being able to get to and from work. Mm -hmm. It's also the concerns that, that our customers have uh, it results in slow, slower days, shorter business hours, things that negatively impact everyone in society. Mm -hmm. You know, just the ease of, of, of enjoyment, you know. A uh, couple nights ago, they had an issue on Arapita Avenue, for instance. J just simply people being able to go out and relax yeah. and the mental stability of the nation is impacted because of, of, of crime, and we're seeing that in, in the workplace as well. Yeah, I, I noticed uh, the other day there was a report in the papers, uh, I believe it was in Shagonas, and they were saying that they, they're closing, businesses are closing earlier as a result of trying to be as safe as possible because customers have complained about if I go and buy doubles late in the night, somebody following the home and robbing me, and things like that are happening. And that is, that is you know, in the individual circumstances, but it's a generalization for how people feel in terms of safety right now. Uh, what can the business sector do, or is there anything that the business sector is doing currently to be able to say, well, we're going to help to make that a little bit better? Well, the business sector normally approaches that on, on two fronts. Mm -hmm. uh, or, well, really three fronts. One, uh, when, when we look at securing our customers in, in location, so mm -hmm. we, we heighten security, increase security guards, which is naturally a cost to, to us. Um, then also in terms of providing transport for, for our employees to and from um, the, their, their places of, of work and, and home just to ensure that they, they get home safely. Mm -hmm. And thirdly, we, we tend to contribute to the, to the immediate um, society in which we operate around our different locations. So when, when you look at some of the energy companies, um, they spend a lot of money in, in Miaro and in, and in point fourteen, in terms of the communities, mm -hmm. to enhance the community environment, uh, which ultimately we're hoping reduces the challenges of crime and also improves the environment in terms of which people work and, and, and live as well. And that should be, is that an all business approach or is that a specific to oil companies approach? No, no it, it is an all business approach. And uh, as you know, ESG is a big arm. Um, environment, the social yeah. and governance is, is a big push of the business community. Right. And our social environment is a critical component of the ESG philosophy. Mm -hmm. And therefore, countrywide, businesses are focusing more on how do we enhance the communities in which we operate in. Yeah. And it's early in our journey, but I, a lot of businesses are contributing directly to their communities and, and also in many other social welfare areas in terms of donating the different causes that support the underprivileged in society. Yeah, I, I mean, we mentioned that and I still see and hear about situations uh, where if you come from a particular community, you feel like you need to change your address if you're applying for a job in certain areas. How do we deal with that stigma? Well, in, interesting. Uh, I'm, I'm more concerned on, on the flip side of it, and, and that is uh, businesses need employees, uh, and, right. and, and businesses don't employ people strictly based on, on, on where they live. Mm -hmm. One of the challenges that, that, that companies face is that their employees aren't able to get home if they, they live in certain areas. Okay. So uh, in, in one of my previous um, roles, I, I Work for uh, um, a restaurant management company right. that opened till 
two o'clock in the morning, etc. Mm -hmm. And you you hear stories of well, I have to sleep in the store tonight because I can't get home because th there's there's gang violence in in, in the area. Or mm -hmm. we we've had instances where our transport taking people into different areas have been shot at, and mm. and, and therefore even the people transporting um, our employees into the different challenged areas yeah. say, well, you know what, I can no longer do this area. So it's not the businesses per se that, that choose employees based on location. It's whether the employees can fulfill the obligations because of the challenges they face in any location, which ultimately we end, end, yeah. end up facing uh, as a business community. And it is a very difficult situation because we need employees, the socially dis displaced in society need employment, and we need to find a way to make it so safe for them yeah. to come to work and to get home so that they could provide for their families, which ultimately their kids are the future of the nation. And it that's the goal. That's the goal that we're all trying to get to, is being able to provide for the next generation. Correct. You, I understand that there's a crime committee in the chamber. Correct. Tell me about the work that, you, that you've been doing with the crime no, committee. The, the crime committee, we look at, at working with different uh, police youth groups uh, uh, throughout the, the country. We, we also assist our businesses in terms of understanding how they can more effectively manage the, the crime that is happening mm -hmm. so that they can operate as efficiently as possible in the, the challenging circumstances. So we look at it twofold in terms of the crime committee. One, what what we do and how we support our members, mm -hmm. but also how we can support societal benefits like uh, police use groups and, and different areas that, that uh, we we support as well. So All we right. take it from both areas. Now, as we're here uh, for the for this symposium, tell me about what, what outcomes do you hope to, to, that we achieve out of it? Well. Let me throw it out there. There's, there's a lot of talk outside there. It's, it's a big talk shop. I, I don't believe in labeling things like that. Mm -hmm. at, at the end of the day, I think it's important. We have, we have a lot of regional knowledge in terms of how people are managing crime throughout the region. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important that knowledge-based persons meet and find what are good options for us to get out of the crime situation we're in. So one region might be handling homicides very well, mm -hmm. and one might be handling house breakings very well. If, if we can all share what is working in, in each one of our countries, and therefore we can better effectively spend the money we spend, because the, the Ministry of National Security gets $7 billion a year. Yeah. We also spend m money in education, which all that overlap, social services as well. Health as well. Health as well. Mm -hmm. So it, it's important that we share knowledge so that we can make the best decisions and spend money as effectively as possible to get to the goals of, of reduced crime and, and, and violence in society. In talking to Dr. Dr. St. John just now, she mentioned you know, the diversity being one of the pluses, but also one of the negatives when it comes to how we go forward. Because for example, you, you mentioned you know, one region might be dealing with house break-ins very well versus deal, another place dealing with gun violence very well. But if the culture of those two places are, are different and we have diversity within the Caribbean, how do we then apply that data to us or to anywhere else in particular? Well, naturally, you, you would have to look at how the culture impacts the, the response to what you do. And r really, culture is, is more about how you communicate, motivate, and get people passionate about what you want to do. Mm -hmm. And different cultures would have different ways of, of, of garnering that information and, and getting it to, to the people and getting them motivated to be on board. But the underlying action is what I think is, is, is it will be interesting to see what actually did work. Yeah. And then if we could take that away, mold it into how we can communicate it across our, our, our challenges and our culture, mm -hmm. I think it, then we'll get a positive result out of what we, we're trying to do. And I understand you're presenting on day two of the symposium. Day two. What yes. can we look forward to from you in your presentation? Uh, just um, our presentation is, is very simple. We, we compare some stats and come up. Uh, it, and we feel crime is a solvable issue. Uh, what we in the business community always do is, is look for root cause mm -hmm. and, ad, and attempt to address the root cause. Uh, so we're actually starting from a, our global position in, in, in the world, and that is number six. And then we work our way down 
into, into our numbers, but very casually, not, not any heavy, heavy set of numbers, but more observations that the numbers point to, so therefore we could get the root cause. Mm -hmm. All right, well, I look forward to that presentation and, of course, how it's, how it's going to affect what comes out of this, the action plan that's set up for, for the, uh, after the, the symposium is finished and for implementation after. So let me say thank you very much for joining us this morning. I know we cannot really in, to come down to the Hyatt, and you're not, you're not presenting today, but I'm sure you're interested in the, in the conversations happening today. Definitely am, and, and let me just put one plug in quick. The media are very important in terms of succeeding in whatever the plans are to, to, to tackle crime. Yeah. So I think business community, the government, everybody is looking for the support of, of the media to push the correct agenda forward. And here we are doing the so making sure that we get the right information out there as we'll be covering the regional symposium happening today and tomorrow. We're covering it live on CTT. And if you want to uh, take us on the road with you, we're also broadcasting live on safecaribbean.caricom. Dot org so you can tune into the entire thing. Ladies and gentlemen, this is how we get ready to wrap the now morning show. Thank you so much for being here with us. I encourage you to go out there and make a difference today and now because together we aspire and if together we perspire, together we can achieve. On behalf of Kimberly D'Souza, I'm Rockers wishing you a fantastic day. Take care.